Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Zor Education. Um, I'd like to solve a couple of non-trivial equations. Um, we all know how to solve some really simple things like linear or quadratic equations. Um, and that's really not very interesting. Well, boring, quite frankly. You have the formula. Um, if you remember it, it's good. If you don't remember it, it's kind of easy to derive it. Um, and just use the formula. So as long as you have an equation with all its coefficients, just use this particular formula, you will get the solution. So what if you don't have the formula? <coughs> and uh, <coughs> excuse me. And um, in the real life, you don't really have the formulas all the time, right? So you have to invent something interesting, something new, something which will help you to solve a particular problem. And that's what actually the whole course of mathematics which I'm offering here is about, to develop these qualities of creativity, uh, logic, analytics, which will help you to solve something which you don't know how to solve before, and nobody taught you how to do this. So, these are examples of this type of uh, problems where you have to really like think about it and use some non-trivial, uh, non-standard methodology to come up with a solution. All right, let's go. Number one, x squared minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 2 squared equals 16. Okay, obviously this is um, an equation of the uh, fourth degree. x squared squared, right? So it will be x to the fourth. Um, and obviously you don't know, nobody knows the formula. So we have to invent something, something peculiar for this particular uh, case. And it does have certain peculiarity. And here is what I can suggest. You see, here is a very interesting thing. x squared minus 4x. What does it remind? Well, it reminds me x minus 2 squared, right? Because x minus 2 squared will be x squared minus 4x plus 4. So x minus 4x is part of something which I kind of, well, it's, it's my guess. I mean, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. But it looks like x minus 2. But this is x minus 2 squared. You see, this is exactly the peculiarity which you have um, noticed, or I have noticed. <laughs> uh, so let's just try to use it. Now, how can we use it? Well, there are many ways. For instance, if I will just open this up, I will have the same x squared minus 4x squared plus 7x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 16. And now I see that these are common things. So I can just substitute y is equal to x squared minus 4x as a new variable. And now I have a quadratic, basically, um, equation uh, of y. Now this is y squared. This is 7y plus 28, and there is a 16 here, so it's plus 12. And uh, solutions to this are obviously minus 3 and minus 4, right? Because their product is the free member, and their sum is this coefficient with a minus sign. But you can actually uh, do it properly. It's minus 7 plus minus 49 minus 48. So it's minus 7 plus minus 1 divided by 2. Plus is minus 6. So it's minus 3 and minus minus 4. Yes, that was right. So minus 3 and minus 4. Now, knowing that, I can use this expression and basically find x. Now, that's easy. So, x squared minus 4x 
This is minus 3, so it will be plus 3 equals to 0. That's one equation. And another is x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. This is from minus 3, and this is from minus 4. Now, here I will have two uh, roots which are Three and one. One minus four, three, nine, minus twelve, minus three plus three, correct. And here this is actually x minus two squared, so x is equal to two, and this is the double root. So these are my solutions. Now this is actually double root, as I, as I was saying, because it's x minus two squared. So I have four solutions, two of them are the same which corresponds to the degree of this particular equation. It's the fourth degree, so it should have four uh, uh, solutions. And here they are. All right, um, now, the checking. Well, let's just do a quick checking, at least for something, like the three, for instance. Three square nine, minus 12 minus three square nine. So this is nine. This is 3 minus 2, 1, so it's 7, 9 plus 7, 16, correct. And you can check the others, I'm sure they're good too. Okay, so what was an interesting part in this particular equation? Um, it's just to notice that these two have something in common. That x minus 2 squared would look like this one plus some free uh, coefficient. All right? So this is just a, you know, it's a guess, if you wish. Um, but the problem is that if you solve, I don't know, hundreds of problems like this, you would probably see these peculiarities, well, more or less easily. OK, let's go on. Uh, x plus 2 over x x plus 16 over x plus 7 equals 4. Well, it might look a little scary, and it's obviously nonlinear, not quadratic, etc., etc. But there are two very important things to say about this. First of all, if we will just use the common denominator, which is x times x plus 7, now this would be x plus 2 times x plus 7, which is a uh, uh, polynomial of the second degree. This would be x times x plus 16, also second degree. And this would be x times x plus 7, x times x plus 7 times 4, which is also a polynomial of second degree. So if we will just use this common denominator and uh, put everything um, uh, uh, under, uh, above it, we will have a quadratic equation on the top. And we can basically get rid of the denominator in this case. Now, there is one very important thing, and it's very important not only for this particular equation, but for many others. You see, all these non-trivial equations um, might have certain um, restrictions on the values of uh, the solutions which we are looking for. Now, think about this. If I will really like do just, just do whatever I just said, which is just use the common denominator. So this would be from this plus uh, this plus this equals and divided by divided by common denominator equals to 4 times x plus 7 times x divided by x, x plus 7. Now, my intention is just to get rid of this common denominator, because if these fractions are equal to each other and denominators are the same, then the, the, the numerators must be the same. And equalizing these numerators, they just have a quadratic equation, because this is x squared, this is x squared, and this is x squared. Now, but this is a very important thing. Uh, I, I said just get rid of the denominator and equalize the numerators. Yes, it can be done. However, 
existence of denominator right now, before I drop them, actually restricts certain values of the solution. X cannot be equal to zero, and X cannot be equal to minus seven. Because in both cases, this common denominator would be zero, and the whole thing would have no sense at all. Same thing if you look at the original equation. It cannot be zero here, and you cannot have zero uh, there. So x not equals to zero, and x not equals to minus seven are initial restrictions on the uh, solutions. So you have to really realize whenever you see something like this, uh, which might really have certain um, uh, restriction on the values of the solutions, you have to upfront do this, and then look for solutions. Because during your looking for solutions, whenever you do this, you immediately lose this particular this particular restriction. There is no restriction like this in this case, but in the original equation it was. So if by any chance I will get a solution to this quadratic equation, x equals to 0 or x equals to minus 7, I should really immediately discard it as the one which is outside of the domain of allowed uh, solutions. I don't know whether I will or will not have these solutions among solutions of this quadratic equation, but if I will, I should discard them. So let's just solve this particular thing. That should be easy. So this is x squared, 2x and 7x and 9x, plus 14, plus x squared plus 16x, equals 4x squared plus 28x. This is my equation. So x squared, x squared, and 4x squared. So subtracting 2x two, two squared from both sides, on the right I will have 2x squared. 9x, 16x, it's 25. This is 28. So I subtract 25, and I will have 25, 28 minus 25, 3x. And finally, the free member is 14, but it would be with a minus sign, right? Is this right? Okay, looks like it. I think. And, um, Solutions are divided by 2 minus 3 plus minus square root of 9 plus uh, 4, 8, uh, 8 times 14, it's 8, just 8, 1, 12, which is So x is equal to minus 3 plus minus um, 128, that's 11. So it's 11 over 2. So I will have x equals to 8. Oh, I'm sorry, it should be 4, not 2. It's a double first. It was 2x squared something, so it should be 4 here. Um, so it should be 4 here, right? So it's 8 divided by 4, it's 2. And the next one is minus 14 uh, over 4, so it's minus 7 seconds. Okay, so these are solutions, right? Now, none of them is this, so it's okay, no problem. They're not 
um, uh, within the restricted uh, set of solutions. So let's just check one of them. But two is easier, right? So 2 plus 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. This is 18 divided by 9. It's also 2. 2 plus 2, 4. Correct. And uh, I'm sure minus 7 seconds also works fine. So what was interesting about this particular example? Well, um, the interesting thing is um, that although you can really very easily um, bring the equation to the square, to, to, to the quadratic equation, you should, not, you should not forget that there is a denominator which you really have to, uh, which you really have to be very careful about, and uh, uh, you have to really make some kind of exceptions. Your uh, set of solutions is restricted to those which do not really uh, uh, put the denominator uh, to zero. That's very important. Okay, uh, the last one. x plus 1 to the minus second degree, x plus 2 to minus second equals 1.25. Okay. Um, well, let me rewrite it in a little bit better format. Um, and one more thing, which I probably can really make my, si my life a little bit easier. Um, you see x plus 1 and x plus 2. Um, I think it would be easier if um, I will use um, substitution. Uh, this would be 1 over x plus 1, and this would be square, and would be 1 over x plus 2 square. Now, it would be easier if, instead of x plus 1 and x plus 2, I would make a, a substitution, y is equal to x plus 1, and then x plus 2 would be y plus 1, right? Now, why is it easier? Because it's easier to deal with the denominator y than denominator x plus 1. So instead of this, I will use this substitution. And I will put here y and y plus 1, where y is equal to x plus 1. Okay. And what's equal to 1 and 1.25, let me deal with rational numbers, fractions like this. That would be easier. And obviously, I will try to do something similar to what I did before. I will get rid of uh, the denominator, and I will put everything uh, on the top to have some kind of a polynomial equation. Polynomial is easier than dealing with this thing. Obviously, I have to immediately restrict my uh, set of allowed solutions to y not equals to 0 and y not equals to minus 1 to prevent these two denominators to be equal to 0. Now, after I have restricted myself this way, now let me just try to basically bring everything to the polynomial format so I will bring everything to a common denominator, which is y squared times y plus 1 squared, right? I can always rewrite it using this, right? And same thing here. It looks a little bit easier, right? So the common denominator is y squared times y one, y y plus one squared. Now, what's good and what's bad about it? What's good is that on the left I will have quadratic y plus one squared here and y squared there, but on the right, unfortunately, I have the polynomial of the fourth degree, right? So it will be y squared times y plus one squared. Well, whatever it is, let's just deal with this. So on the left I will have y plus 1 squared, and I will open it up, which is y squared plus 2y plus 1. 
and this would be y squared. Five fourths of of y squared. So y squared times this, um, which is y squared, so it's y to the fourth plus two y plus square, it would be to the cube, plus one times y square, it would be y square. That's on the right. Okay? Now, obviously, I have to put four here, so I will have only integer numbers. And what would I have? I have y square plus y is two y squares times four, it's eight y square plus eight uh, y plus 4 on the left. On the right, I have 5y to the 4th plus 10y to the 3rd, 5 times 2, plus 5y squared. I think that's right. All right, so let's move everything on one side of the equation, and that will be 5y to the fourth plus 10y cubed. Now 5y squared, 8 on this side, so it would be minus 3y squared minus 8y minus 4 equals to 0. That's my equation, equation of the fourth degree. Well, you don't like it, me neither. But let's just think about it this way. If I am trying to solve this particular equation, if I'm giving to to my students, then I well, well, and it has integer coefficients, then it does make sense to look for some um, solutions among integer numbers, which are divisors of the free member. If you remember, when we were talking about equations of the higher order, it's always like this. If you have integer coefficients and you're looking for integer uh, solutions, they must be among divisors of the free member, uh, of the free element. Now, divisors are 1 and 2, basically. Well, forget about 1, probably. Let's just check 1. 5 plus 10, 15, minus 3, 12. Now, 1 actually does solve the problem. So 1 is a solution. Great. So if 1 is a solution, it means we immediately can divide it by 1. We have to extract the factor x minus 1 from, the, uh, from this particular, uh, uh, from this particular uh, polynomial. So how can we do it? Well, very simply. It's 5 y to the fourth minus 5 y to the cube. If you will multiply, if you will uh, factor out uh, uh, 5y cube, you will have y minus 1 left, right? Now, but we need 10. So minus 5, it means we have to add 15 y cube, right? Now, to again factor out y minus 1, we have to subtract 15 y squared. So this would be multiplication of factor of y, uh, y minus 1 by something. This would be y minus 1 by something else. Now, I need minus 3. I have minus 15. So I have to add minus 12 y squared. Right? 5 minus plus 15 minus 15 no, plus 12, I'm sorry plus 12 minus 15 plus 12 that gives me minus 3 now, if I have plus 12, I have to have minus 12 y to have y minus 1 from here but I have minus 8, so I have to add 4 y and minus 4. As you see, here is, I have rewritten my equation by adding and subtracting certain things to every member 
so that on each in each uh, per, uh, pair of parentheses I have one minus uh, I, 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 uh, y minus r y minus one as a, as a factor. All right. Now why do it, why did they do it? Because again my uh, divisor of four, which is one, fits as a solution. I basically guessed a solution, but since I have guessed the solution, I can factor out x uh, y minus one. If one is a solution, I can factor out uh, from the polynomial one minus one. And how to do it? By basically breaking each uh, component into something which I can factor out y minus one. So in this case, it would be y minus one times 5y to the third. Okay? Now, in this case, it would be plus 15y squared. In this case, it would be 12y. And in this case, it would be 4. So that's my equation. This is the same as this one. Since I have guessed my first solution x minus 1, uh, I mean y minus 1, I can separately have y is equal to 1 as a solution. And by the way, it's allowed solution because it's not 0 and it's not minus 1. After which, I can solve this equation. Because when the product of two uh, polynomials can be equal to zero, but either one is equal to zero, and that gives me this solution, or this is equal to zero. Now I have to find some other solution. Well, let's try to guess again. One we have already exhausted. One is definitely no more than a root, so it's not like a double root. How about minus one? Well, let's check it out. This would be minus five plus 15, that's 10. This would be minus 12, which is minus 2, plus 4, 2. So minus 1 doesn't really fit. Now let's check 2. Well, 2 obviously will not fit because everything is positive, but how about minus 2? Minus 2 uh, cubed would minus 8 times 5 is minus 40. Okay, so this is minus 40. Let's write it down. Now this is, uh, if it's minus 2 square, it's 4 it's uh, times 15, it's 60. This is minus 2, it's minus 24, and this is plus 4. Minus 64, minus... Okay, so minus 2 does actually fit. Great. If y equals to minus 2 fits, it means I can represent it as y plus 2, right, times something. So, let's check what y plus 2 might be. Well, if this is supposed to be broken down, um, so I will have y plus 2, it should be 5y cubed plus 10y squared, right? Then it would be 5y squared would be factored out, and what will be uh, remaining is y plus 2. Okay, now I have 15 y squared. I have 10 here, so I have to add 5. Now, so this is factorable uh, by y plus 1. Now, here I need 10 y. So if I will factor out 5 y from both, I will have remaining y plus 2 as well. Great. Now, I have 10, I need 12 plus 2, y plus 4. And this can be factored out 2, and I will also have y plus 1, y plus 2, sorry. So, right now I can rewrite this as a plus 5, uh, sorry, a plus 2 times. In this case, it's 5y squared, right? 5y squared. In this case, it's 5y. 
and in this case it's two. So this is my next representation of the same um, equation of the third now power as a product of two, the first power and the, and, and the second power. Okay, now from this I see that my new solution is also good because it's not part of the prohibiting values for the denominator. And what's left, so if the product is equal to zero, either this is equal to zero and that gives me the, the solution minus two, or this is equal to zero. So this is my, this time, a quadratic equation, which I already know how to solve. This is just the formula, which we all remember. However, it does not really have any real solution, because 5 squared minus 4 times 5 times 2 is less than zero, so we don't have any solutions in this case. So, this is the end of it. I've got two solutions. So it's a quadratic equation. Uh, I mean, it's a fourth degree equation, which can be represented as a um, quadratic equation and two, um, and two multipliers. So one would be y minus 1, another is y plus 2, and another is 5y squared plus 5y plus 2. This has no solutions. This gives me 1, and this gives me minus 2. Both are allowed. Well, let's just check um, the solution for x. Now, we know that x is related to y with this formula. So y is x plus 1, so x is equal to y minus 1, which is either 0 or um, minus 3. OK. 0. Well, this is 1. And this is one quarter, and that gives me 1.25. So zero is really uh, the solution. We just check it. Out. We just checked it out. That's fine. And minus three. So this would be um, one over minus two square, which is one quarter. And this would be if it's minus three, then it's minus one square one. So it's again one and one quarter. So it's 1.25. So yes, checking five, uh, fits fine. So this is a solution, both solutions. And uh, that's the end of the, uh, this particular equation. Uh, equation seems to be a little bit complicated. And again, it's uh, transferred into x to the fourth degree polynomial, which is you know, pretty difficult thing to, to solve. However, with certain degree of ingenuity and creativity, we have really decided to look for integer solutions, and we found them. Um, obviously, if again, let me just repeat it: if I'm giving this particular problem to to students to solve, then I kind of specifically chose not just the general equation of the fourth degree, but the equation which can be solved in some reasonable way. So. To look for integer solutions is a reasonable way which I have decided. Okay, so that's it for this particular lecture. The purpose was to introduce you to some non-trivial uh, examples of um, equations to solve. And I'm sure as the time allows, um, I will probably introduce more and more problems of this type. Um, the number of available problems of this particular kind, like non-trivial equations to solve, is really unlimited. And the more time you spend to basically solve these non-trivial um, problems, non-trivial equations, well, the better your creativity and your logic actually will, will, will be developed. So I do recommend you to, to solve as many as possible 
non-trivial examples when there is no ready-to-use recipe, when you have to really invent something, you have to guess something, and that's what's very important. Okay, thank you very much. As usual, you can find all the information on my um, website and notes for this lecture. Um, thanks again. Until next time.